Here, what's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video. I just want to say, first and foremost, thank you all for the great support you showed on yesterday's video, which was how to free up $40 million in uh, cap space for the New York Giants. I'm glad you guys liked it because today's video, and um, in fact, the next couple of videos are kind of in line with that one, kind of a mini series that I'm doing on an off season plan for the Giants. So, in part one, or the unofficial part one i guess you could say we cleared that cap space and move moving forward with part two we're gonna move forward with uh the plan that patricia trainer had um because i once again i said in that video and i'll say it again here it was the best way that i saw moving forward you know we only really made three major cuts there was uh three restructures and we got to 46 million dollars in cap space cleared up with a functional cap space of around 23 million dollars if you want kind of a better breakdown a full breakdown of that check out last uh or yesterday's video and i have my own thing in there as well but that's what we're going to use moving forward in this video and the video is going even after this because in today as the title suggests using that cap space that we just got um with that plan i'm gonna try and see what potential free agents the giants could sign to look to improve their roster uh, or bolster their roster or you know just make up what we might have lost from those cuts basically uh, and the 2022 offseason I guess is officially underway you know the Super Bowl is over and whatnot and the Giants do have some needs that we need to be taken care of so let me say this like I mentioned 46 million dollars cleared up we have a dead cap of 20 million with a functional cap of around 23 million of that 23 million dollars around 10 million we're gonna leave for the draft give or take to sign the rookies um it's always around that number it's not an exact one but let's just say it's around 10 million dollars left to the rookies right there which gives us 13.2 million to work with in free agency and that is not a lot um be honest with you guys it's not a lot it's not an ideal situation but it's what we have and you can certainly sign a couple of good players here obviously not any superstar caliber players however i think you could get some starters i think you could definitely get some legit rotational guys and somebody that could add some to this roster now the three main positions i'll be looking to add uh right now is center corner and defensive tackle the reason i'm targeting those is because all three of those free agent classes are actually really nice um you have guys at a price point that the Giants could afford in each of them that could bring something some type of legitimate help to us and that could help us improve a little bit in addition to that I'm doing this with keeping in mind the draft and trying to think about what the Giants might do in the draft obviously what positions you don't get to address here in free agency which is going to be very small uh, because of the fact that we have very small space to work with you're gonna then go and attack with the nine picks that we have in the draft so that being said, let's start off with cornerback, actually. And for a while now, I've had one particular guy in mind to sign for this cornerback uh, position because James Bradbury is gone in this scenario now. We had to cut or trade him to help free up a lot of that cap space. And now Adoree Jackson is our number one cornerback. And I do think that Adoree is a really good, I think he's one of the top tier number two corners in the league and a borderline number one. So for one year, I would be completely comfortable having him serve that role as the top corner on our team. You know, last year he did have a really good season in my opinion. Uh, some people would argue he had a better one than Bradbury. So I'm fine with him there as number one. In fact, our cornerback depth, if you go down the chart, it's pretty good. Um, it And it has a lot of my corners as well. You know, you got Aaron Robinson, you have Darnay Holmes. You got Rodarius Williams, who even as a sixth round rookie was showing some things. It's not a, a depth chart that is terrible, uh, but it, it definitely could use one more guy. And the one guy that I've had in mind for a while is from the Buffalo Bills. Obviously, our general manager, Joe Shane, is the assistant or was the assistant general manager of the Buffalo Bills for his past four years of his career. And the guy I was looking at is Levi Wallace. Now, Levi Wallace was an undrafted free agent in 2018, I believe, that Buffalo picked up. And he signed three, or, or is it four? Let's see, 2018, 19, 20, 21. He signed four straight one-year deals with Buffalo. And all of them were around the $1.7 million range. And in every year that he signed that one-year deal, he's been one of the most underrated cornerbacks in the league. Without a doubt. 
He's played in one of the best secondaries in Buffalo is what some people would offer. And they'd say maybe that's disguising or, or uplifting his play a little bit. To that, I'll say it's one of the best secondaries in the league because he's part of it. At one point, he was that direct number two guy opposite of Tredavious White uh, before. Uh, what's the guy's name? I think it's Kevin something got there, the, like the new number two corner in Buffalo. And he's been serving as that number three now. And he's been just spectacular uh, for the signing. Spectacular as an undrafted free agent that is playing in playoff games that's playing on a team that is facing legit competition and somebody that is covering really good wide receivers and doing a good job with it like i said he's very underrated and i'm surprised that he signed four straight one year very very cheap deals and if we could somehow snag him up on a similar deal with joe shane working some magic using that buffalo to buffalo connection that would be amazing I would love to sign that man to like a two or three year deal averaging around $2 million. However, what I've noticed is that his projected market value is way more than that. In fact, his projected market value is actually averaging around $10 million a year. The thing is, I saw this last year for Levi Wallace as well. And we're kind of in a conundrum, right? I saw this last year for Levi Wallace. He elected. Uh, we don't know what actually went down. If anybody actually offered him that same amount or if Buffalo was the only team that offered him money and he went back there because of that or, you know, just offered him a good deal and he went back there because of that. However, he it is time for him to get to a payday. You know, you you could go and look at the guy's stats if you um don't really see what I'm talking about. But over the years, you know, in his career, he's had 219 total tackles, 171 with two QB hits. 30 pass deflections, and 6 interceptions. Those are pretty good numbers for him, in my opinion. So if he does, in fact, cash in this year, we're out of Levi Wallace. What does that leave us with? You look at the cornerback group around this price range of $1.7 to $2 million a year. Uh, you still have options, I think, that could come in and add something. Um, I was considering Vernon Hargraves until that man became a meme and what he did in the Super Bowl this uh past week however i think he'd be a pretty good option there so with sydney jones and trey herndon from the jacksonville jaguars maybe justin coleman from the miami dolphins as well all of them are around that range and all of them i think would be good additions to this team as cornerback depth and possibly being a number two slash number three corner for the time being where adori is serving as that number one so get one of those guys sign them to around a two to three year deal with the average being $2 million, give or take a hundred, maybe 200,000, right? That's a nice contract right there. We go over to the center position. Who are we looking at? We're going to have to be looking once again at a guy that you're hoping for a value again. The good thing is there is one specific guy that's there that does not have a market projected value of around $10 million. That's Ted Karras of the New England Patriots. Similar situation to Levi Wallace, where he just signed kind of a one-year prove-it deal, or not necessarily prove-it deal, but a one-year deal with not a lot of money. He was on New England, a $3 million contract. It was a six-round pick out of Illinois back in 2016. Served very well as the New England Patriots center. I've, in fact, I do think he was with them before that as well. Yeah, he bounced around quite a bit. It was the New England that drafted him in 2016. I think he ended up on the Eagles and the Rams at some point with the Dolphins. And then back to New England where he was their starting center this year. If he could bounce to us now for, let's say, a three-year $12 million deal, two-year $6 million, two-year maybe $7 million deal, I'd be very cool with that. You know, two-year $8 million, somewhere around 3 to $4 million a year for a very short contract with Ted Karras, I think not only is doable... But it brings somebody that has legitimate starting experience and was a good center for uh, New England this past year on a good football team. Now, a lot of people is going to be like, oh, no, we're signing another New England lineman. Uh, no, we just did that with Nate Solder. I don't think this is a Solder situation because, one, you're not giving him like a boatload of money. You're not giving him uh, the, the highest like left tackle contract in the league. You're giving him, in fact, a very, very cheap deal for a center. One and two, Solder was like considered a top player at his position at that time. Karras isn't that. You're not really signing somebody that turned out to be a bust more as you are just signing a role player that's bounced around the league. I look at him as the equivalent of a Ryan Fitzpatrick at the quarterback position. He's a journeyman and just let him journey his man over here to me. That was a terrible joke. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> then we go to the defensive tackle. Um, the next position I want to look at, and if you've been watching my past couple of videos or, you know, you've just been in my streams, you know I've been harping on the fact that we need to build back up our interior of the defensive line. 
And with this one, we don't have to look far. I think you go to a guy that we had just this year in Austin Johnson, who's an undraft, not an undrafted, who is now a unrestricted free agent. And I think you just re-sign him on the same deal that he was for $3 million. If he wants a bit more, that's fine. You could bump it up to $4 million a year. That's still within the budget that we have right now. And Austin Johnson was was really good for us. I don't think there's any Giants fans that would complain about it. Uh, he even looked to be the best defensive tackle out there sometimes, but that's because, you know, Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams are doing a lot of the dirty work. But Austin Johnson was completely fine up the middle. He was somebody that stuffed the run well, and he got to the quarterback uh, a couple of times as well. Like, he was, you'd see him out there putting in work, running after the QB, man. It was crazy. But without a doubt, just re-sign him. If you like the environment here, if he wants to stick with us, he already has experience with us. You know, I'm sure he probably has a good bond with, with um, Williams and, and Lawrence as well. Get him back here, man. And with those three guys, you know, you basically spend, let's say, $2 million on the cornerback a year, $4 million on the center, $3 million on the defensive tackle. You add those up, you get nine million dollars of the 13 million that was allotted and like i said there's room you know if you want if you want to say that maybe those numbers are unrealistic they'd be a little bit more there's room for it to grow but i'm gonna say that we have around three to four million dollars left to work with and with that you could either sign more of these depth slash rotational guys uh you could probably get one more of them or you could sign depth guys that are under the roster guys that kind of fill in although i will say you kind of get them in what i call like the second or third wave of free agency like when training camp and stuff is happening right like, like that when you got like the 90 man rosters and whatnot that's when you get those end of the rosters guys or you could go and you could get a backup qb which is definitely a position of need as well because i don't i don't really feel comfortable entering the year with a uh mike glennon at my backup qb again so like the two most attractive options here at this point with that remaining money would be either backup qb or another inside o lineman guy or another defensive tackle guy and if you look at the backup qb market well i mean i'm not sure what to tell you other than mitch trubisky who has been rumored to us because of the buffalo connection and because there's the idea that he could pose a legitimate uh competition to daniel jones well he was just on a two and a half million dollar deal with buffalo so if he continues on that uh trajectory for a backup qb we could certainly get him and if uh that is unrealistic then any backup quarterback in the league is signing for one to two million dollars like mike glennon was on a 1.375 million if we want to get the goat colt mccoy back he was on a 1.2 million dollar deal so i would get colt mccoy back i like colt mccoy as our backup qb there's also um you know brandon allen out there chad henny blaine gabber like we're talking about backup quarterbacks there's certainly space for that in this three to four million dollar range and then you could probably still get another rotational guy or you could go and get a couple of those end of the roster guys but like i said it's not an exciting free agent period definitely not an exciting video per se but i like what we're doing here if this is the case you get a cornerback that could serve as a number two or number three on a cheap deal you get a legitimate center a journeyman center but he's going to be a legitimate one that you could use on the team for at least two years and you re-sign a guy in austin johnson that proved himself to be a good defensive tackle to keep that defensive tackle room together because i don't want to break it up any more than it already has been and then you potentially get an upgrade at the back quarterback position and, and that is of course all before the draft which leads me to say the unofficial part three in this mini series of the offseason plan will be tonight at eight o'clock um, that is when my mock draft, seven round mock draft video is premiering. Um, if you're new to the channel, you should definitely come back to the channel at eight o'clock to check it out. My mock drafts, I put a lot of work into them and I think you guys would enjoy it. And all three of, all three of these videos are connected from clearing the cap space to using the cap space we cleared to then bolstering the roster with the draft. It's all one big plan and I will have kind of a big recap video afterwards showing what the the 2022 roster looks like after that. But you guys put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think like share subscribe and i'm out hey guys thanks for watching thank you for checking out my channel the hub here on giants youtube make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video like it share and subscribe and i'm out